Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to lesson 5 in the Tafsir series. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise due to Allah who has given us the Quran, made us Muslims. And now we're looking at the commentary in the Quran to understand from it and benefit from it and take from its wisdoms as well. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Surah Ma'un, the next one as we go back from, from the back of the Quran. Surah Ma'un is the next one. The small kindnesses, the small tokens. Allah SWT starts off with A'ud Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajim Bismillah Rahman Rahim Alam Arayta Alladhi Yukadhibu Biddin Have you seen the one who denies the uh, the deen, the requital, the day of judgment, the hisab, all this accounting to take place? So have you seen that person who does that? So this is in reference to the, the, the mushrikeen of, uh, of the Quraysh at the time of the Prophet Sallam in Mecca, the, 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 bad, the baddies, the leaders of the baddies um, and they, the ones who deny that they're going to be meeting Allah, the, the ones who deny that there's going to be a day of judgment, a accounting to take place of your good deeds and your bad deeds. So what do these people have in common? They are hard-hearted, harsh-hearted, qalb, and they do what they want in life because uh, there's no, they can do whatever their desire pleases because there's nobody to take them into account. There will be no, there will be no accounting, there will be no um, equality, uh, there will be no uh, justice. They, they don't. They don't believe in such things. So, as you can see, they just carry on doing what they want. May Allah protect us from such people in life. We do not want to ever have people like that coming into our, into our uh, life and life stream as we go. So, Allah Subhanahu is making example of these such people. He's, he's highlighting these to make us understand things that what goes around comes around because Allah Subhanahu says in the Quran, "Yawma yudaguna ila nari jahannam da'a." The day they will be pushed into the fire forcefully. So, okay, uh, this is the next ayah. فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ These people, hard-hearted, they push the yatim. That symbol of the orphan, but the symbol of weakness, just in general. So, they push these people very harshly away from them. They come for money or they come for food. They'll push them away and fling them like like anything. So, Allah SWT says in the Quran, يَوْمَ يُدَعُونَ إِلَى نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ دَعَى That day, that day they will be pushed they will be pushed into the fire that same da'a forcefully yeah so they, Allah SWT uses yadu'a al-yateem and in other words da'a that same one basically to say what goes around comes around they pushed people hard the, the most vulnerable Allah SWT is going to get his zabaniya the angels the punishing angels the zabaniya may we never see them and they fling them throw them and uh, forcefully push them into the fire. So Allah says these zabaniya, these punishing angels, and Allah has rewarding angels, and Allah has angels who do dhikr. So if you do goodness and you spread goodness, and you do kindness and acts of kindness to others, it's gonna come back to you. Understand that. If you do the opposite, harsh-hearted, push away people, be mean by tongue, by actually actions, guess what? It's gonna come back to you as well, and it's gonna be worse. Both cases, worse in terms of the punishing but in terms of the rewarding it'll be even much sweeter and much times multiplied 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 so this is also highlighting people that are right have you seen this those who um, deny that day so alhamdulillah as muslims we believe that there'll be yom qiyamah there'll be day of judgment and then justice will be done and may allah make us have the good deeds more than our bad deeds and um next part and these are the people who do not believe in that. They just push the yatim, do whatever they want to them, and then uh, that's it. Wala They do not persuade others to. Uh, do not persuade others to feed the needy, to give to the needy. So we have to be kind. We need there's more people worse off than us. We need to be kind. Do uh, fulfill their needs as much as we can. We should love for them as we love for ourselves. Uh, the Prophet Sallam, he mentioned a story from the previous generations, uh, the Banu Israel. It was a Tajir, there was a um, businessman, and he hardly, he, hardly, he hardly prayed, he hardly did any uh, any kind of charity or anything. He, he didn't do much in terms of good deeds and sort of actions of good deeds. But what he did do was, he, with his business and everything, he would lend money to people, and when they couldn't pay back, he would overlook it. He would write it off. He'd write off that debt. He would make it easy for them. I said, "Oh no, don't worry. You know, he wouldn't press it down, and I'm going to charge you interest on it now, or something, and so forth. And I want the money back." But he would be that kind and how kind-hearted he would be, and generous in that sense. So on that day, when he's asked, "Where is your deeds? What, where, what, what have you brought for this day? What have you prepared for this day?" 
he has nothing to say, he has nothing to give um, as, as an answer. So, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who knows all, he knows that he is the one who did such kindness to people and he overlooked, he helped people with his money and didn't, uh, didn't uh, rebuke or anything or chase them or uh, you know, for why they when they didn't pay back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we are more deserving of such things as treatment, so we're going to do the same with you, go to paradise and uh, that's it, every shortcoming overlooked. So this is an example from the people from the previous generations and as we know always that you, know, you you do good acts and kindness sometimes you may never know what deed is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves of us that he forgives us for many other things. And similarly we never oppress because we don't know what it is that causes us to be the ones who um, are going to be taken to account and held to that by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we did such a bad and evil act especially to somebody else. And who does not give a feed to the poor. So we talk about yatim is a symbol for the for the uh, weak. The yatim is the person who does not have a father, does not have a mother. And the Prophet he was one who was he is the ashraful yatim. Uh, he is the one who is the most uh, the noblest of the ones who are the orphans. Wasn't he not a yatim? Did he not have a father when he was uh, born? And then his mother passed away quite young in age as well, the age of six. So before even reaching the age of puberty, someone loses both parents. They're such vulnerable, they need love. If you have one in your street, if you have one in your neighborhood, you have to be like a father to them. You have to be like a mother to them. Show that love and that kindness whenever you see them as they don't have that love that others are normally uh, who, who, have, who take it for granted, who have been born with it, with a father and a mother and have the love, that parental love from the beginning. So they're the ones who are most in need and uh, this is Allah is showing an example of people what they do to even the yatim, most vulnerable. Didn't the Prophet say, "Ana wa kafil yatim fil hakada," that I and the the orphan on the day of judgment will be like this? Allah did not say this closeness to one me and the person who prays, me and the person who gives zakat, me and the person who gives who fasts. No, it's for the one who is. Uh, uh, me and the orphan are like this. So imagine you do kindness to an orphan and you look after them and you give them that love that they have lost from such an early, early and young age. So woe to those, those performers of salah. Wail is also um, a nadi. It's, it's, a, it's a wadi. It's a uh, uh, valley in, the, in Jahannam. It's a name for that as well. But it also means woe to this person, curses to this person. For, to the ones who pray, but it has to continue to the next verse. الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Who are those who are the ones who neglect their prayers. So they pray, but guess what? They pray in the wrong times. They pray outside of the times. Didn't Jibreel al -Islam, come at Fajr time to pray, at Fajr time to show that this is the time of the prayer, at the beginning, at the end of it, came for Zohar time at the beginning at the end, prayed at that time, prayed at the time, to show the boundaries of each prayer, but we over transgress the boundaries, we pray our Asr, uh, Zohar in our Asr times, and our Isha, uh, do, you know, every uh, Maghrib in our Isha time, and we pray outside of those bounds that we are, we are limited in for praying. So we need to pray and in our times, as it says in the Quran, in the salat kanat ala al-mu'minina kitabun mawquta, that indeed prayer, is upon the believers a prescribed thing it's that's it you have no two ways about it it's a, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants asr pray at asr time zohar at azhar time so he's we have five prayers we need to pray them in its time so may Allah make us those who are and in, the, in each time the beginning of that time is the most fadila the most virtuous time to pray so let's try and pray all our prayers at the beginning yet not at the end when it's the more makru time the dislike time or even the haram time when there's not even much time left to pray. So, salah is so important and here, woe to these people who neglect. So, forget, what about the one who forgets the, or who leaves the prayer out? SubhanAllah. That person, the one who leaves the prayer is even in a worse off situation. But this is just for the person who uh, neglects their prayers, but who prays, but he prays in the wrong time or just neglects as well and just kind of keeps missing prayers here and there. So, uh, to, to woe to such people. Oh, as he says also they are with their prayers they are neglectful in terms of praying it they're not 
So Allah didn't say that we are in our prayers we are forgetful. So subhanAllah, because we would all be forget we would all be guilty for that because we're praying and suddenly our mind's going to our businesses. Our my mind's going to our business uh, our photo we're thinking about or a a a, um, a question someone asked, so we need to try and think of did I give the right solution to it? Or uh, that girl that somebody starts thinking about, or that boy. So we all start thinking about various things. That uh, game I left in the middle of, I need to go back to and finish that game. Which way shall I go next? So we think about so many things as we pray. Um, everybody has in their own, whatever age you're at, there there's things that distract them from the prayer. There's shaitan at, at work, and the, the, the whispering is as well from the shayateen. So we need to make sure we concentrate on our prayers as well. We have the khushu, we have that humility and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowhere we are praying, we are conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are facing Him. We are, uh, you know, we, we are going to be the closest to Him when we go in terms of our, our forehead, the most sacred part that even the fire does not touch. We put it on our on the floor. So let's realize where we, what, what kind of context we are in and try and fo maintain our focus, uh, especially in our prayers. And then finally, it goes on to the last two verses, الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاؤُونَ Who do good, only show off. So, if you show off, you do just to get a good name, get every people, oh, like, yeah, he gives money, he prays a lot, he does this, so and so forth. These people who kind of seek that, that fame, that um, may Allah protect us from that, because that is showing no sincerity, and there's no sincerity, no ikhlas, then there's no acceptance. Allah subhanahu wa is not going to accept that deed. And... Um, a waste of qarni, a great name, a, sahabi, a not a sahabi who didn't get the chance because he was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he was looking after his mother in Yemen and she was not well, so he couldn't go to see the Prophet. ﷺ. But the Prophet ﷺ made mention of him. He mentioned that he had this leprosy, this this illness of the skin or so in this part of the skin. He told he mentioned of him. Umar Radhiyallahu listened intently and then he knew that this person, because Umar al Qarni was a man from the Tabi'een, the followers of the Sahabas. Uh, and he was one of the great from the kibar of them, the great of them, the, the, the elders of them. Some say that according to the more stronger opinion, he was one of the best. He was the best of the tabi'een uh, for that generation. He was the best, that second generation after the Prophet Sallallahu The first generation being the Prophet Sallallahu the Sahabas, and the next generation being the tabi'een. Finally, the third one being the tabi'een, tabi the followers of the followers. Followers of the tabi'een. So, Awais al Qarni, he was one who would do such great deeds, such great. Uh, uh, amal, but he wanted to keep it in secret and he always keep it in secret and not show off to anybody but the process of men made mention of him so uh, Umar Radhiyanu, he wanted to ask him that oh uh, he wanted to ask him for a dua for pious people's duas are accepted and there's no barrier between that to Allah and it's the, 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 the Kabul so uh, Umar Radhiyanu, he didn't get a chance to meet him um, he became the the Khalifa, and in his time he became the the, the Amir al-Mu'minin and every Hajj season he asked about Oiz Karni is, is he around, is he here, has he come for Hajj this season one day he did see him and after that Oiz Karni was never to be seen again because as soon as Umar al came and saw him and asked him for Dua after that he left Yemen, Oiz al and, he, and no one knows where he went after that and nowadays, today even um, there's claims that he's, his grave was in Yemen, his grave is in Iraq, his grave is and so on and so forth. Even now, today, we don't know where his grave is in that sense, such that he wanted, he didn't seek uh, fame. That it, that's how his life ended. That he, um, no one knows, no one knows where he's buried. So obviously, he was a man of great deeds, great actions, and and keeping away from fame, keeping away from, um, of of being known. He just wanted to be like just known like the others, like the others, just 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 a normal person. So. This is about the ikhlas, this Uwais al he had this, and it was such that even the Prophet mentioned him, he never saw him. And finally, the last word, وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ And they refuse even the small gifts. So, وَيَمْنَعُونَ um, الْمَعُونَ And, so, and to, to, to um, even small tokens, small gestures, that, that's that, that's refused. Woe to these people who, who don't even give small things to people who need them. So this is like when the time, previous times, when there was neighbors and they needed something, uh, a lemon a uh, for the cooking, an onion, they, they didn't have a garlic clove or something. So you give them and it's nothing that you go get, you get it back in return. This is just a small, uh, simple item. This is a, it's a trivial item. Uh, but that time, neighbors used to know each other. They used to help each other out. They used to give things and share things. 
uh, you know, barbecue chairs, you want barbecue chairs, that you'll give back. But, you know, I'll oh, have a few, have a party, barbecue party. I want to, I want to barbecue chair, uh, a chair for the, my, you know, for the, for the, for the garden party. So you, know, you, you kind of share these things and you give these things and that obviously you'll give back. But today's generation, we don't even know, uh, we don't know our neighbors. We don't even know uh, what occupation they have. You know, we need to converse with the neighbors as well and build that bond as well. So it was different times, but these people, they refuse such things. So Allah is highlighting people about those hard-hearted who even the most vulnerable push them away and do not give them food for uh, give them food to um, to eat and drink. So we need to know what goes around comes around, and let's try and be Muslims that spread goodness so that we get that in return in this dunya and in akhirah. We say Rabbana taqdir dunya hasna wa fil akhirati hasna wa kina adabna. We ask Allah for good in this life as well as in the akhirah. So may Allah make us understand from such ayahs that He's verses he's given us and he's told us about um, and we understand about the from the wisdom of such things the morals from these things